things to go was <laughs> the wonderful access we have to hairstyling. We all natural. Okay. So I'm um, uh, to make. I'm gonna ask you guys to participate in the chat, which I'm gonna be watching here. Um, if you go to church online, the the pastor always type is it was telling people, okay, type in the chat, say amen, say this, say that. So I'm gonna be asking you guys to type stuff into the chat. To start off, I'm gonna be uh, okay. So what are into the chat? An emoji of how you're feeling right now. If you're, uh, you guys are cold. Are your emojis all sad and cold? So I'm waiting. Come on, somebody type, put something into the chat because that's the only way we can get things going. I'm like, how do I click? Oh, there. Okay, Wanja is happy. <laughs> only Wanja, uh huh? Kevin is feeling cool. Wilson put in a nice smiley face. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I see love, uh, I see hearts. Every, and the church said hallelujah. Okay, guys, this is what we need. I'm seeing Jenny, you're cold. I'm so sorry. It's so hot here. Like you keep hearing the AC go on and, and off. Luckily for me, I'm sitting in my mother's house, so I'm good. Okay, so uh, I have a couple of house rules. Number one, interact. Like I said, interact, interact, interact. Uh, get to, you're looking for the meh emoji. Okay. We're gonna get to a place towards the end where I'm gonna tell you when to put in the questions. So as we're speaking, just interact based on what we're talking about. And when we get to the end, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a signal so you can put in any questions that you have. But maybe I'm a genius speaker and I'll speak so well, there'll be no questions. I'll have explained everything. But let's see. Number two, I'm gonna ask you not to Google. So if I ask you a question, just respond based on what you know because then it's better. You can Google and get the correct answer, but that won't be as fun. So just uh, do what you know. Uh, yeah, and then question. And so three things, interact, don't Google, questions at the end, and that's all. So to get us started off and to check, uh, to see that we are in on this interactive thing, I'm gonna ask you five questions that are about Kenyan music and the Kenyan entertainment scene, okay? Uh, there's gonna be a bonus question if people get the, all, all the questions right. And then, um, I was going to say the winner gets a prize, but I, the only prize I have is Arimis. This is how you know African Kenyans in America. We all have our Arimis everywhere we go. Okay? So question number one. Which popular night spot was known back in the day as the Vu? I'm waiting for your answers. You guys will know the answer. The Vu. You remember guys saying, we're going to the Vu. We're going to the Vu. You guys don't know the answer. I'm so hurt, honestly. I can't believe it. So let me explain. The Vu, can anybody, does anybody? Yes! Carnival! <laughs> Carnival. Carnival. Carnival used to be called, and not even by us guys, like we didn't even call it the Vu. Carnival was Carnival, then known as Carnivorous. Then people started calling it the Vu, but by the time I started going out, we just used to call it Kani. But yes, the Vu. So what I'm seeing from this is that it takes a little bit of time for the chat to catch up with me. So that's okay. I'll give it a bit of space. Question number two. So I'm seeing only okay, three people got it. Three people got it right. I see you. I see you, girl. Kani, the Vu. Okay. So Suzanne Kibukosia, join Boya. And I can't remember who the third member were a group known, were in a group, a girl group known as Musically Speaking. They had one monster hit. I don't know if they had any other songs that, but what was the name of that most popular hit by Musically Speaking? Go. Hey, Marianne, I see you. Jambriambo. <laughs> if you don't remember this song, it's okay, don't feel bad. Maybe you're just too young. Or your parents just used to listen to but Jambriambo is like one of the first pops that came out and least put it on TV um, yeah so that was it one person knew it was Jambriambo oh okay question number three I'm gonna sing you guys a little bit of a song tell me if you know which 
Kenyan singer, and some of you didn't even know he was a singer, Kenyan singer and radio host sang this song, okay? I'm no hurry, won't you take your time? I'd rather be a little late than dead on time. It was everything. <laughs> Even Sammy knows everything, Jimmy Gafu. The song was called, I think it was an ad for driving safely. Did you guys know Jimmy Gafu was a, 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 a singer? Even he had a song, Aki it was released. I promise, it was released. Okay. So these songs were all from a popular production house in Nairobi, okay? They are Boomba Train, Moss Moss, Nina Noki, Swing Swing, Aki Innocent, even you can't wait for me to, can't wait for me to finish the question. Ogopa, Ogopa, you people all know about Ogopa. Okay, I can see that Ogopa was the one. Finally, this one might be a little bit hard. I really hope you're, if you already knew it's Ogopa DJs, Ogopa DJs. Finally, the song My Everything on Saudi Soul's new album Midnight Train features which famous songbird? Mm -hmm. Let me give you more hints. She is an international singer. Good. Yes, Innocent. India Irie. Can you believe Saudi Soul have a song with India Irie? Do you know that if you know one member of Saudi Soul, that means in six degrees of separation, you're like right next to India Irie. You know somebody who knows India Irie. It means you know her. You can get her phone number and call herself. Okay. So bonus round for all my fans out there. My single Usijali features... I thought you were saying my feature features my song was the jelly features in the area. I would, I would have been boosting. If my song had in the area on it, I would live on top of a mountain and just be telling people. My song, my single Usi Jali features, okay, let me make it better. Features which member of Saudi Soul? I can see BN. Like in Ingependa BN. Like in see. Yes. Yes, Wangari. Delvin Mudi. Even you have said both names. Thank you, Dee. Delvin Modigi. Okay, so it shows me that we're all tuned in and that we all understand how to use the chat. And if we keep going like this, it's going to be lots of fun. So let me do, let me do that thing where we'll share the screen. I'm like, but there's so much stuff on my screen. How am I going to share it with you? Maybe you'll see my secrets. People didn't train me earlier on how to share the screen properly. Okay, here we go. Let's go into Zoom, window. I'm like, I don't know how to do this thing. Am I useless? How does one share the screen? Okay, well, someone texts me and shows me how to share the screen. I'm kind of going to use... Uh, um, introduce the topic. The topic is they love us, they love us not, right? So the things that we're going to be talking about are our relationship as Kenyan musicians and basically Kenyans, right? And how it seems that we have, uh, uh, okay, here it says, but I've been told, press the green button, okay? How we have a love-hate relationship with um, okay, it says, what does it say? It says desktop one. I'm like, it doesn't want me. I should have practiced. So, um, basically, how we, how Kenyans enjoy or enjoy Kenyan music. So, if we can't share the screen, I guess it's just gonna have to be what it is. Oh, so I have to grant, yes, Zoom. Yes, Zoom, you can access my screen. Okay, it's not going to work out. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to tell it to you as, as it was, and I'm just going to go into the first thing. So we used to play this game back in the day, right? Uh, we would take a flower, girls would take a flower, and they'd pull off the petal saying, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not, okay? And whenever we would do that, 
you get to the end and then you decide whether he loves you or not. So if it said, if you go to he loves me not, then now you know that he loves you not. But if you go to he loves me, then you know that he loves me. It's just that we would, if, if, if you go to the end of the flower and it was he loves me not, you take another flower until he loves you, right? So that's what we did. That's what we tried to do. And it didn't work out for us. Oh my goodness, it's letting me do it. Yay, can you guys all see? So you see in the first thing, I am here with a guitar, uh, but I'm not a guitarist. Uh, this picture is a lie because I'm actually a pianist, okay? So here we are talking about they love us and they love us not and all of this and all of that. Like, should we go into full screen? Yeah, okay. I guess everybody can see, yeah? Let me compose myself. Okay. This cool right now. I'm going to show you some of the things that are happening in Kenyan music in Kenyan music right now in comparison to how things are happening in Kenyan music in music in other countries. I guess the best example I'm going to use is Nigeria, right? So before we go into this thing, I'm just going to give you guys a bit of a disclaimer, right? Because while we're talking about music, while I'm saying that Kenyan music is wonderful, um, this is not to say, and every song by Kenyan is great. They are really good Kenyan songs. But this is not that good. I guess what we go on will understand, right? So I'll ask you guys again to type into the chat. What do you What do you think a music genre means? Peer music genre. What do you think that is? Sorry, I think we lost the guest speaker. Is I will ask somebody to uh, tell me what's going on in the chat so that I don't keep moving. So let me ask you guys: What do you think the 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 um, when you think of music genre, what do you think it means? What do you understand music genre to mean? Okay, I see a mood. Uh huh. Somebody else. of music based, uh-huh, okay, a style of music. That's actually what it is. Music genre is really just a word for a type of music, okay? In fact, in French, I'm doing this thing called Duolingo, where you can learn French. It's actually a type or a style of music. That's all it is. It's, it's nothing more exciting or, or, or complicated than that. So, and like, should we try and do this screen sharing thing again? Okay, host screen sharing is disabled. So I'm gonna throw a name at you, I guess, since we can do um, the, the picture thing. Okay, we are back to the thing. I'm going to do my best not to... When I, when I show you this picture, what, what does it evoke? Like, what do you guys think of when you see this picture? I'm gonna, okay, because I can't see the chat, I'm just gonna assume. Um, if anybody knows who this artist is, I'm gonna imagine that this, you know that this is Erica Badu, right? And that Erica Badu is what they call a neo soul artist, right? So neo soul has been presented in Kenya as a kind of bougie, upmarket, really cool, really special kind of music. And that's what we've gone with. But that's not the truth at all. Let me read you a direct quote. Neo soul is a genre of popular music, right? This term was coined in the late 90s to market and describe a style of music that emerged from soul and contemporary R&B. Heavily based in soul music, neo soul is distinguished by a less conventional sound than its contemporary R&B counterpart. Part with, with incorporated elements ranging from funk, uh, jazz fusion, hip hop, African music, and pop music. It's been noted by music writers for its traditional R&B influence, con conscious driven lyrics, and strong female presence. So obviously, it's a big reason why I love Neo Soul so much because it does uh, focus a lot on on women and, and and how we are and how we feel, right? 
uh, now the problem with how Neosol has been presented to Kenya is that it then gives the impression that this is not the music for everybody. While when you look at the description of Neosol, Neosol was actually popular music when it came out. It was a child of hip hop and R&B, which were the most popular popular genres at that point. So we move on to the next point, which I'm going to ask you: What do you think is pop music when you hear this is pop music what do you think it is like i'm like the problem is now i can't see the chat so i don't know what you're saying i hope you're writing wonderful things in the chat because when i'm done with this and i close it i'm gonna go and check out the chat right popular music guys is actually not a genre of music pop music is just whatever music is popular at that point in time so i know when we were young there was the you know the time there was the rays of lingala music and everybody was listening to kanda bongo man and kofi had you know the biggest songs then at that point lingala was pop music when adele was receiving multiple awards for her kind of music and that's blues you know maybe uh, rooted in r&b but that's blues then blues was popular music so we're given the impression that pop music is fast-paced upbeat exciting music and that's not always the case it just depends there's in kenya the most popular music was popular music was music right so at that point people were listening more than anything and, and it was what it was okay so Cool. I don't know if you've heard of these artists, so I'm still going to ask you to put it in the chat and then when I'm done, I'll check it out. How many guys have heard of a singer called Tetushani? You know, and if you have any of this, these are all people who are considered musicians and alternative musicians. We don't get me wrong. Populations still. Musicians, in my point, they still end up musicians. Is popular about people like Steve. I'm talking about uh, Lisa Dwarno. If any of these are just let me, everybody, I'm assuming, but other than Daima, can five songs by Eric Wainaina who incidentally has four albums out. In fact, he had a recent one that came out just the other day and he's putting out singles from, I think his fourth, his fifth studio album. Uh, other than Kisumu 100, what songs do you know by Susanna Oweo? Existing artists in Kenya who are producing music that doesn't get through because it's not still wonderful and beautiful. But let me leave that. Music is not a genre of music. It's just what's popular at the point. I think it's memorable. It's wonderful. I want to remember it. If you go to church, you know the most popular song, blessing, right? Everybody's doing in thousands of different languages. I see it came out now, even though I've seen another Kenyan one that come out. In the gospel, music now is the blessing. Even though it's a slow song from this, because I want to talk to you about our contemporaries. To type into the chat. Who are what you call in your opinion? And for this I can share just to see. Who are they? Let me see. Kassan is like the best song in the world. Yes, I'm expecting to see Saudi Soul. Uh, Saudi Soul. Who are what you think the most? Okay, I'm seeing Ochung. I was waiting for. Oh, gee. If we see my uncle, who is younger than me, my uncle Caligraph Jones, our saints. Do. Izo. Makadem. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Femi One, Fena and Femi King Kaka. These are names, the names are 
best. And these people who we the best music acts in Kenya. Okay? But let me show you what the vast difference between a popular music act in Kenya. Uh, you guys know this dude. His name is Don Jazzy. This is Don Jazzy's house. Okay? This man has built an empire simply from being a music producer. Okay? Now, we've not even talked about the acts who he has brought up. And some of them, like my favorite, one of his acts is Tiwa Savage. This is her back in the day. And think that these photos are two years old, right? Because I didn't edit that's neither here nor there so this t was savage back in the day when she was getting her dream car right and i know uh, maybe none maybe you guys don't know this but do you know last year t was savage had a billboard in times square in new york she actually came to new york and filmed herself see moment because this was from an African, this was a billboard for an African artist who lives in Africa and who was talking about an African song. In my opinion, it was wonderful. I can't believe such a beautiful thing had happened. Okay? Then about guys like Peace Square who have a jet. Okay? Think about our Kenyan counterpart, because these are our Nigerian counterparts, right? We are not anywhere near this level. And their level of success is not based, is based on nothing other than the love that their country has for them. Okay? The acceptance and how their country mates basically invest in them, invest in listening to their music, invest in going to their concerts, invest in asking the radio stations to play their songs. I, I don't know if you guys know that if Beyonce has a concert in, in Nigeria, and uh, Tiwa Savage has a concert in Nigeria. You know where they're going? They're going to see Tiwa Savage's concert. You find a Nigerian guy who doesn't watch Nollywood, he will fight you to the death, okay? To tell you that Nollywood is best. And when you ask him which Nollywood movie is your best, he doesn't even know because he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't watch Nollywood anyway, right? And think that these are the people who I'm talking about in Africa. Talking about people, but we can't even start to compare because after, also just a note to self, uh, just a note to you guys. Also, we do have to consider that Nigeria has a very big volume of people who obviously their industry is much bigger than ours, which is why they are able to produce such because you you're you're able to sow into your into your what you're able to get. So that's how you see they're going to have big concerts with being airdropped with jets. I don't know if anybody was airdropped. I'm just putting for them, right? But I do take into consideration that Lagos itself is Kenya times two. So that's that. But Africa is Africa, you know? The United States is a continent. Africa is a continent. And out of the United States, you see artists like these guys, the Carters. These are two black people whose wealth, as in these guys are just like us, because you know, a lot of Africans in, in, in our generation are just, a step forward from poverty, okay? Meaning your parents grew up in sharks. Not to say that sharks is poverty, but you understand what I mean. Your parents grew up from sharks, probably were the first to go to university. Some of you are, you know, are the children of the parents' <laughs> children who went to, you, you know what I mean, right? But I know my parents were the first to go to university. Right? They grew up in sharks. They are the ones who came to Nairobi. They are the ones who found out how things were going to and went to America and took their children. And some have even gone and got stuck there. But Beyonce and her husband are the same. Some of them come from an influential family, right? But they have gotten to the point where they are able to film a music video. Me, I've never seen Louvre. Even stepped on the stairs of Louvre. I've never seen. I'm hoping one day I'll go photograph in Louvre. But these people have the kind of wealth where they can actually do this kind of thing. And the reason that they do this is because of support from their continent, support from the black community. I know that at some point Beyonce was uh, loved by white people as much as she was by black people. I do know that she made a subtle change where it's not that white people don't like her anymore, but she is now you know, very unapologetically uh, black and she's okay with it. And I think that this thing, when, when I go back to Kenya, I think it even goes further than just music because you have people walk into a supermarket and see Nescafe coffee and Java coffee. 
right? We produce the best coffee in the world. And you see people going to the supermarket and grab Nescafe coffee. Just for reference, I actually went onto Amazon before I came here and I checked. Java coffee is on Amazon is $24. Nescafe is $4. Okay, that's how the world sees this loose coffee. But for us, it's like we need something else to come and tell us that the Kenyan thing is nice for us to accept it, right? Uh, case in point, Lupita. Lupita was here hustling, struggling, doing sugar. And then when she won that, is it Oscar she won? When she won Oscar, we were like, oh my God, we love Lupita. Did you watch Sugar <laughs> before? But, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, you people are bad. I'm just saying, it's, it's like as Kenyans, we have a dislike for ourselves. It's like we see, if it came from us, is it nice? Is it really nice? Is it even nice? And that's the thing that we're talking about, right? Um, we, we, we have concerts in, in Nairobi all the time. Well, I have a song that came out with Nameless. I was going to talk about it, but I guess it is what it is. It was nice. We had a good time. We had Clara Spitzer shoot the video in Lagos. Lagos was a trip, but that's another thing altogether. So we have concerts that we do in Nairobi, like um, this Fusion is a concert that I've done for the past few years with Yunga Shui. And we, you know, we, it's, it's fun. It's an exciting concert. We get our dance on and we have wonderful people come. So we're saying freedom is coming tomorrow. He was just dancing. He's bare chest man. Who is that guy? I don't know if my mother has seen this picture. You know, we have our show um, that we're still definitely going to do this year. Come rain, come shine. Tis the season. I don't know how many of you guys have come to see Tis the season. Tis the season is a show for Kenyans by Kenyans. We get different music directors every year. We've had Eric Wainana for a while. And what we're trying to do with Tis the season is to create a Christmas experience for Kenya that's relevant to Kenya, uh, to uh, tailor Christmas songs to fit us, right? To fill your heart with joy and wonder right before the season um, kicks off. In fact, we like to do it around that Jamhuri Day holiday because usually people haven't traveled. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen this year. You know, we actually don't know what's going to happen this year. But the thing we do know is that come rain, come shine, if it ends up being as well as that, we will have tis the season, right? I think that I'm more or less done, so I'm going to stop the share. Um, oh, yeah, I'm saying people have been tis the season. You've been going for three years. Let me tell you, we are going to, what's it called? Eight. <laughs> I'm seeing somebody said Nigeria has a music industry while Kenya has a recording industry. That is, is true. That's actually true. And one of the reasons we have a recording industry instead of a music industry is because other than Kenya's not loving us, after this, you guys need to just be telling guys, I love her, tell me so much, she's my best. Whether I'm your best or not, I'll know whether you did it. But it's also professionals in our industry. We don't have professionals. We, we have musicians, we have band members, we have all those things that make music work. We have producers. We don't have people who act as managers, as, as publicists, as booking agencies. I don't even think that we have a real record label in Kenya, maybe other than Pine Creek. And when I say a real record label, I mean, uh, people usually have a studio and then in the studio, they invite the artists to come and perform to come and sing the songs with that one producer. And that's not what we want to have. We want to have a record label that actually sources music from different producers, puts things together. You can see that in Saudi Soul's album, train, the one that they have now. They did different songs with different artists. It's art direction. You can see that that's a thing. And then just, again, a side note as an artist as to another reason I find this um, record so wonderful. A lot of people get signed to record labels and then they completely go off the rails and go in a different direction of music that nobody understands. And they're like, ah, now you're famous, you're not singing. I feel like what Saudi Soul did is they started as Lazizi guys and then they went and did a lot of pop music, fast paced music that people loved and got them a lot, a lot of eyeballs on them. And then when they were signed to a big record label, they went back to their Roomba roots. I think that's just, I think it's wonderful, right? I actually think it's just a wonderful thing they did. Uh, but we're still at the place where when we're talking about how these guys who you named, uh, Modoni, Modoni the drama queen, um, we're talking about uh, everybody who talked about Saudi Soul. 
I'm not going to tell you to put it in the chat because I don't want you to feel ashamed unless you want to say for yourself. But when is the last time you actually went to one of these guys' concerts? There are concerts in Nairobi and obviously we're talking about pre-corona, right? Who signed Saudi Soul? I can't remember, but they were signed to an international, um, uh, what do you call it, manager and an international record label. It was Sony. I'll find out. You don't find out those things. You just keep me. So you don't. Yeah, as long as there is some universal music, universal music. But I do, I, I love the, I love it. I just love what it looks like. It's, it's beautiful, right? So you're talking about how UB40 can pack a concert in Kenya, even to the point that Uhuru will come to that concert, you know? And our biggest act, because if we're honest, our biggest act right now, somewhere between Saudi Sola and Yashinsky, right? Sure, they'll have a concert that has people maybe a thousand to two thousand, but UB40, which will be five times the price, who haven't released a hit in years, will have 10,000 people back in the venue. Why? You know, why? This is the song that we currently listen to. Why is it that we won't spend our hard-earned money? Or if you feel pain, I've had people say, I mean, I can't go to that concert the expense. I'm like, it's 1,000. UB40 is 20K. <laughs> you guys are gonna go to that. And okay, so actually this is the point where you can start um, putting in the questions because I am I'm wrapping up. And I guess what I would do is I would end things with a challenge to you guys. And the challenge is do something Kenyan this week, okay? Um, Oh, you went to Juliana's virtual concert? That's nice. Me, I would love to have a virtual concert, but I can't do it because I'm here. And my, I did, I had one, but it was playback. You know, you can only really do that like one time. It's the same songs over and over again. Can you just sing them the same, uh, same songs the same way? That's kind of boring, right? So my challenge is do something Kenyan today. As Kenyans, we are like our claim to fame is we are haters on Twitter. I don't want that to be my legacy, you know? We're talking about, even Tanzania love their artists so much that when you're thinking of songs, as in, if you see a new song that has come up by a Kenyan artist, I'm like, click on it and watch it. Maybe it would be nice. Maybe it won't be nice, but at least give it a chance. I think that we don't give Kenyan things a chance. Me, I'm those people of, um, yeah, we're keyboard ninjas. <laughs> I'm those guys of, just because it's a Kenyan song, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm seeing that um Genge Tone, people are talking about Genge Tone and how it's slowly killing the industry i'm kind of in the comment i'm, I'm kind of in the question section right now if, if you don't know my challenge is do something kenyan listen to some kenyan music make plans to go to a kenyan show you people i've seen all your names if i don't see all of you it is the season i'm going to tell your president i don't know what he'll do to you <laughs> but it's a wonderful concept it's the kind of thing that you should that you it's not maybe i think you will enjoy it so give it a try. If you try something Kenyan and you don't like it, if you go to a Kenyan restaurant and you like the food, that's fine. But at least give Kenyan things a try because there's such wonderful quality out there that we don't get to because we don't give it a chance. Okay, so let me talk about, um, I'm gonna try and answer all the questions if I can. Genge Tone is killing the industry content wise. People listen to the thing that they think that they should listen to. So again, it's all about conceptions. Genga tone is, is um, it's an interesting kind of music. Unfortunately, it has been pioneered by people who do a lot of, I want to say dirty content, which is adult. And there's nothing wrong. If you want to listen to um, Lambes, that is really your problem. It's okay. Listen to it if you want to. What I'm saying is it doesn't mean that there's no room for anything else. I don't think it's killing the industry content wise. I think that the point is to do everything that we've been talking about, right? Listen to more music and post, post Africa sound as opposed to, you know, the other thing. What is Kenyan sound? Why can't it come out as clear as Bongo Nigerian South African? Why are we so Western? Okay, so Kenya has, I don't know if Kenya has a sound. I don't, I don't even know if Nigeria has a sound. Nigeria has an accent. Because if you listen to a lot of the Nigerians, a lot of the Nigerian songs, Kina Tiwa Savage and Kina, whatever. Yeah, sure, there's that Niger beat, but Niger beat isn't as big as it was before. And there was a Kenyan sound with Kina Ogopa, and when things came out, um, when Kina Susanna Wee and Kina Eric Wainana came out with that music that they were playing, that Afro, Afro fusion sound. So 
I don't necessarily think we're Western. I think it's also in terms of broadening your horizons and looking because the, um, I, I think that I have some music that sounds Western. I also think that I have some music that sounds very Kenyan, right? And I think that as opposed to, you know, our accent, our Kenyan accent is nothing. It's just that we say the words the way they are. That's our thing, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't think we don't have Kenyan music we also don't have a national dress other than that lesson that thing that if i'm seeing that it didn't work out well uh, have i answered the question i don't know um i think that if you want to hear a kenyan sound it is there it's just about looking for it even that genge tune itself it's not necessarily kenyan it's just it's how you interpret the music it's how we speak the swahili when we're singing it that makes it genge tone okay we should have the versus kind of thing can you start it i probably could if if i was in kenya <laughs> but from where i am my hands are tied there's just there's not much do kenyan musicians have enough music for one hour set my darling jenny i have two albums right my song baby baby isn't even on one of those two I can play a three hour set of original music and that's just me eric can play our music set calligraph those we play these sets for in fact every time they invite us to koroga the problem we have is they want the main act to come and perform for long and they stop us at 40 minutes we have <laughs> we have enough content even for three uh, okay i don't like to do three hour gigs i'll be honest two hours is is usually the most i'll go but yeah we have enough music for a whole hour set in fact when i did think that i did a cover a cover show online an hour was not enough we had to come back and then still do some songs and then remember people want okay sing this one again and sing this one again so yeah kenyan musicians have um enough music for hours and hours and hours actually we couldn't agree on national dress it's true tanzania has a sound in bongo flavor definitely i say bongo flavor because that's what they see I'm just looking. Art reserves culture. Where is our art? Art. It's just that if we want, if you want to see something, then look for it. You know, it's not just standing. It, I mean, in fact, it's the whole thing of they say kizuri chajiuza kibaya chajitembeza. I think that's the thing. The things you're like, this is bad. The good things are there. There's beautiful music. Um, why do you think we don't have a distribution network? I know some people tried that successfully. It's the thing that I was talking about, how we don't have, we don't have music professional, right? We actually, it's true, distribution is such a big deal. Um, and the problem right now is also that the CD, uh, the CD business has kind of died. So we are leaning a lot on the international ones, but, I will say this to you, Kevin. You should check out mdundo.com. Mdundo.com have such a big catalog of almost every case, and it's free to download the songs. So while physical distribution of CDs and stuff, that it, 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 the point is also right now, it may not matter, you know? It may not matter, but it was it definitely was a problem well, there was a point they had that wonderful shop at the junction that music store and then they did one at westgate and they sell cds and they used to put up who's doing the best and that was really nice a lot of people tried and failed but also right now i don't think it's it's relevant because we sell cds that shows sure but most people want to watch videos on youtube or just download and the best place to download from this is a secret that we don't tell people is mdundo because sure i have my music on itunes and you can go by itunes even though kenya is not a very strong itunes whatever and spotify and all those but if you go to mdundo, all my music is on mdundo for free i think eric's as well and my graph is on mdundo okay let me move on um who is my favorite kenya i have many my goodness it depends on the day of the week i really like sage so much everything she, i feel like her her voice and how she puts things together because you know sage is, is a kind of set producer so when you hear her music she didn't just write the song but she was there in the studio and they're producing she's there like a little bit this a little bit that i think her voice is so original and i love it i also like lisa Odor. i think she, her voice is 
best voice. In fact, sometimes I hear them, I'm like, oh, this girl's the best singer I've ever had. Um, my, one of my favorite albums is Eric's 2020. I love it. Y'all know the OG? And I, I love Saudi Soul. So many, I love Tetushani. I uh, love Wambura Mitaru. Um, I know Harry Kimani hasn't done anything in a while, but I love so many. I don't know what to do. Could it be, how, let me move on to the next question. Could it be how we view art and music is based on how we are brought up? Um, there are people whose music desire may have been killed by their parents since we see the industry as an afterthought. Maybe, maybe conditioning needs to start with the younger generation. Yeah, that's true. In fact, the end of the thing, which I hadn't got to, was the is in you. I'm telling you guys to quit your jobs. Quit your job, become a manager. No, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But there's money in the music industry. Yeah, um, I, I do know that uh, for me, luckily, my parents were both involved in music. And in fact, in terms of musicians, I don't think they expected me to be the musician. I think they thought it should be my sister. But they all thought you'd do it on the side. Nobody thought that somebody would become a full-time musician. And for my mom, her issue was like, give me the degree. Just graduate university and then so you can have some other skills while you're doing this music, right? Um, any form of training I got on music, I got later uh, teachers that I had for myself. And I don't think my mom really understood it until my first album came out and she came to Kenya and she came to our court. And then she was like, then she bought into it. You know, she listened and she was like, that music is good. It's clean. She was like, I'm not ashamed of telling my friends about you. You know, I can see why people would hire you for music, but she saw it for herself. But I also think what helped my mom was that she was living in the US where she was, where she had a lot of people who were showing her, it's not a shame. You should not cut your child off because they are musicians. So I think I was lucky and also, my mom was a choir mistress, so she was involved in music. I, I'm sure, I asked her the other day, are you disappointed that I didn't become a lawyer? She was like, no, you're not a good singer. And I was like, I don't believe you. But yeah, I'm sure that there should be conditioning. I'm sure that uh, younger people, or maybe even people who are, as long as people see that there's a change in the music industry, and the change in the music industry begins with you guys. If you guys start to pay more attention to Kenyan and not just music, then that generates more money for the industry. That has people, because if I'm telling people, guys, I have so much work, I can't manage it. I need somebody to come and help me. And the guy is working with me and he's seeing that full time, there is money coming in. Why wouldn't he do this? So most people have a manager who's doing it on the side. But guys like South Soul are lucky that they have Marek who did it full time. And you can see clearly where that took them. Yeah? Um, my take on Mogizi, Ohangla, Mother Tongue Music, um, they use more studio sound than traditional instruments. Well, um, I guess I, I say yes and no. I think that there are some mother tongue artists who are incorporating more modern elements into their music, which is fine. I guess there's a market for that. And there are some who are keeping it exactly the way it is and playing the Nyatiti in the studio. I know Eric still uses it. I think Eric still uses Nyatiti. I think that it's beautiful music that I would definitely love to. I, I love listening to it and I enjoy it. Every once in a while, I want to go back and hear some beautiful Isikuti music. I think there is, I think there's room, right? And there is need for other tongue music. We Africans and we will always be Africans. Every once in a while, we do need to listen to something like that. I see one very silly. I love this outdoor. Isn't she great? If I could go back to the late 80s, early 90s, what is one of the things I would change to steer the music. Okay, so in the late in the in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a point where musician the musician was king, right? Um, I know when I was in university, that's when Ogopa came out. It's it's interesting that when Ogopa came out and brought in a new thing of music, it feels like that's around the time when the music started changing because that was also just around the time that Bongo Flavor became big, but. When I was just about to go to university, you know, and in the days of Kalamashaka, even Kinasuja Tubukosia, the musician was king. I also think it's because um, the government then didn't really leave that much room for musicians from other countries. We listened to international music and Kenyan music. That's it. And there were two radio stations that started coming up at that time. There was Kiss FM and there was Capital in addition to KBC. So I think what happened was 
we started getting exposed to other music. And we're like, ah, this thing is that, this thing is that. And we forgot about Kenyan music. And there was, I think after Ogoha, there was a lull for a bit. There was a lull for a bit. So for me, I do know that we started the days of Kina Kalamashaka, and then I kind of stopped because I went to university, and it was hard to have a music career and be in university because you do want to finish your years and move on. And in that time, Ogopa came, and I think Inamimas was also in school, and it stopped for a bit. And then after that time, you know, when it came back, a lot of the spaces had been filled by artists and we've been trying to get that space back. And then the radio stations told people, because, you know, radio stations, back in the days, you had a song you could really play, play it. Now there's a process. Is it nice? Not just is it nice. Will Kenyans like it? I'm like, so you play them, they will see whether they like it. But that's not the day. So what I would change is maybe I would do what people are demanding now and play... Um, a percentage of international music, a percentage of African music, maybe 50-50, but in African music, I'll play 25% of that, or rather 50% of the African music should be Kenyan music. Because there's so much music that even you guys haven't heard, even I haven't heard. I find out new things about music every day. Uh, I see the Moi era when people get him and other as were lobbying against the one-party system via plays. Well, um, I don't know. I've actually never thought of that. <laughs> I did know that. Um, about the, the whole Kugiwa Thiongo thing, I've actually never heard that until now. Um, at that point, yeah, sure, with the one-party system, there was a, a bit of suppression on art. And even when you did, and this is what I've heard from people like Suzanne, you did have to have a kind of message in your uh, in music. The government could ban music. I think there was a time the government banned Kanda Bongo Man. I was like, yeah. So how would one start if they were able to wake up and chase this dream and desire? Now, I think that whatever your dream and desire is, at the end of the day, ends up in purpose. And purpose is where what you're passionate about meets what you're good at. Okay. So if you're passionate about government and you're good at Maybe you should sing patriotic songs. You know what I mean? But no, no, not for you. <laughs> it's not for you. Um, so I'm just going to close and say thank you guys so much. I hope that it was interesting and exciting for you. Uh, I'm guessing it's almost 8 o'clock. You guys are about to go to bed. It's almost 1 p.m. So I'm going to go have lunch after this. Remember, the bottom line is the changes and it starts one person at a time. If you start giving Kenyans, Kenyan music, Kenyan movies, Kenyan, I read all your stories and laugh and comment on them. Hey, start doing that, right? Then we'll see the change, right? Then we'll start to see the change. And if the industries change, that brings more money into Kenya, that builds the economy, things look better for everybody. Okay, so I guess I'll hand over to the president. Bye.